Hello everybody, I'm Hannah and today we're lucky enough to have Anna Schillinglaw from Milk Models joining us for another uh, guest speak. Um, welcome Anna, thanks so much for joining us today. Um, we're really lucky to have you, so thanks so much for taking time out of your bank holiday to join us. Um, Anna, if, if you could just introduce yourself quickly, that would be really great. Um, okay, hi guys. Um, my name's Anna Schillinglaw and um, I'm an ex-model and now I, um, I guess the second stage of my life, went to the other side and I opened up an agency in London called Milk Management. And I guess um, we're very well known for kind of being ahead of the curve and also having an agency that's full of diversity. Um, just to give you a quick, quick background upon myself, so um, I started modelling when I was 17, um, I'm now 45, 17 years, um, and I was um, a, a very slim model and I was with Storm and I did lots of amazing things, travelled the world, lived in New York for seven years, it was pretty cool. And then um, I always struggled with my weight being a model, I was never quite skinny enough, and then eventually um, there was a thing called plus size modeling and I then transitioned from uh, being a regular size model to a plus size model which we now call curve um, so um, yeah and that was great and then I kind of was kind of coming towards the end of my career and was very interested in the other side of it and I was one of those models that was freaking out and that was like oh my god what can I do next and modeling's all I knew I didn't really um not like people that go to university. I never went to uni. I didn't even do my A-levels. So um, I really had no kind of backup. And I guess... I'm extremely proud of where we are, where we've come, how much we have influenced the industry in change. Um, now every brief I get from clients literally has diversity, whether that's skin color, body size. And I definitely feel like we were the big players that kind of helped push that. So yeah, so that is a little bit about me. And, and you founded Milk Models in 2001. What was happening in the agency at the time that encouraged yeah. you to launch your own agency? Um, well, being a model, I was always judged on my body, not my face. And, you know, not tooting my own horn. Back then, you know, um, I always thought, you know, everyone said I had such a pretty face and, you know, I could do anything, whether it be editorial, commercial. But I just felt like I was purely judged on my size, you know, like I remember being on this amazing job in Cuba and like posing in the water, like life couldn't be better. And then the photographer coming up to me and just, flipping my my fat on my arm just saying you're so pretty but you know, um you know if you could just cut that off you'd be perfect and you know little things like that that definitely kind of damage a young girl and I used to be afraid to go into my agency because they'd always be like Annie you need to come in for measurements and I would always kind of you know make an excuse up that you know I was poorly or I just you know um have my period or something just to try and get out of it do you know what I mean and I think I just wanted to open up an agency where models felt comfortable coming in when I do measurements of a girl now I literally scream with joy at their measurements whatever size they are I'm like oh my god amazing you know kind of thing and I think we um yeah we we create an environment that's very welcoming very loving uh, we genuinely care about our models um and also I wanted to change the industry because I'd never believed that a model should be judged on her size. There are so many people that are gorgeous, that shouldn't be held back. They should be able to do everything a skinny white girl can do. And that was kind of my mission. And it took a lot of banging down doors, a lot of doors slammed in my face. <laughs> Even clients now that are really nice to me and kiss my butt, you know, back then were the people that slammed the door in my face. But you know what? It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> you came out on top. Um, yeah. And prior to launching Milk, you mentioned that you're a model yourself. Yeah. How do you think your experience in being a model has helped you, you know, run your own agency now? I think I, you know, models are not, machines they're human beings and sometimes agents need reminding of that i even have to remind my own staff um i remember being that kind of 
moody, bolshy kind of model, but it came from insecurity rather than from being a not very nice person. So I'm often kind of just explaining that to my younger staff kind of thing, like, well, actually, maybe she's being like that because she feels trapped or insecure. So it's just, you know, I think I'm much more kind of open to understanding how they feel. I think exactly, you know, like I always say, I, you know, we're not dealing with numbers here, we're dealing with human beings and every single one of them is different. Every single model comes from a different background. Mm -hmm. You get the girls that come from money that really don't care about what job they do. And then you get girls that come from absolutely nothing. Um, you know, you get girls that come from abused backgrounds, you know, you're dealing with human beings. So I think I have that kind of empathy. So I think that's what kind of makes me a good agent too. I see it from the client side and I also see it from the model side. Mm -hmm. So I think that's kind of a good balance. Puts you in a really strong position to look after all those lovely girls. Um, what is the yeah. behind the scenes process like when you're working and running your own agency? Like what, because obviously we always see the end product you know, we see the model in a magazine or we see her in them in a campaign. Yeah. What happens for that? So what's the process yeah. that we wouldn't normally see? Um, well, you know, the model walks in the door and it's not, it doesn't happen very often that they're just perfect and ready to go. So it can be um, sorting their hair out. Um, the hair might not be right. They might not have great skin. They might have horrendous dress sense, you know, and you're like, oh my God, we need to go to Zara and sort this out. <laughs> um, so <laughs> they might not be able to move in front of the camera, you know, there aren't many, you know, there aren't many models that can just, that are born to be models that can just move and kind of like dancers, their bodies just know how to move and pose, they know their angles. So it's kind of teaching that as well. And, um, and it's actually super exciting. We just had, um, during lockdown, we actually scouted some amazing girls actually through Instagram. We did an Instagram competition. And then what we would do, because we couldn't meet them in person, we would do like a Zoom call like this and all kind of see them and stuff. And there was one amazing girl that we scouted, beautiful black girl, 17 years old, the most divine skin. She had these long kind of different colored braids on. So when she came in, we all fell in love with her face. But she didn't quite look like a model. So we ended up taking her braids out and having her natural hair yeah. and having her feel okay with that, you know, like comfortable with her natural hair. Cause she'd always put like wigs and extensions in and stuff. And literally her first job was like the Mew Mew resort campaign. And, and then literally every top casting director now is kind of on our case with her and actually it's really interesting we're now working with these top casting directors very closely about what she can do and what she can't do like her first job was with Katie Grant and then Katie Grant fell in love with her booked her for a second day and then Katie Grant fell in love with her and booked her for a mega magazine um and just seeing how the casting directors come into play also in helping like create a star and you know also there's a thing um, when you're creating someone that could be extremely special which doesn't happen all the time um you have to be very careful what you book her on so it's really kind of well she can't work with that person yet or she can't do that and you're turning down these big money jobs because it's just the not right not the right time for her and so it's all these kind of plans you have to have in place which kind of make a top model and then you have girls that come in that you know, will be a great commercial girl. And it's about having the right personality. Personality is everything. Mm -hmm. um, and again, being able to model and just, you know, nurturing them where they feel comfortable. So many, many things in play. And, and what, as a model scout, you said, said there that, you know, you did your competition on Instagram, which is amazing. And you mentioned the personality that you look yeah. for in models, but what else do you look for in terms of kind of attitude, confidence, facial features when you're looking for to um, secure new and sign new models? Um, so for me, I've always looked at the face. For me, the face is everything. Maybe that just comes from personal experience. Um, I don't really care so much about the body. I mean, the body is extremely important, don't get me wrong. Um, height is important. I mean, we are scouting some great girls that are like five foot six, five foot seven, but unfortunately, they're not limited because look at Kate Moss, you know, but it's, if you find another Kate Moss, that's different. But, you know, some girls might then be great for beauty and stuff. So, but if you find someone 
that has that face and is also 5'10", 5 5'11", 5 then bam, you know, it's, it's brilliant. Um, skin. I think skin is super important because I think it's like the first thing you're kind of looking at. Um, bone structure, personality is key. Like someone, this girl I was referring to earlier, her name's a jock and personality for days, so up for it. Like apparently her first um, shot she did for Mew Mew, everyone like clapped and screamed afterwards because she just turned it on. Do you know what I mean? So it's having those girls that have that kind of confidence. And, and often we will have a girl come in that has everything but she is just dead behind the eyes and has no personality and it's a real stretch. And girls like that just won't have a career. It is mm -hmm. so important to be confident. It's so important to have that personality. Um, and then also manners, like, you know, you, you don't want a girl that has an attitude. You want a girl that's just open and humble and happy to be there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we do have girls that come in that have, attitudes or problems or they think that's how a model is meant to be but it's absolutely not how a model is meant to be mm -hmm. um, and you have to kind of teach them you know and, and stuff and you know you're kind of like a mom to like you know 200 models you know <laughs> so you're very much their kind of mentor and um, you know mom sister you know I spent my days telling models off, you know, or trying to teach them actually no that's not how you behave and stuff like that because you know as I said you're dealing with human beings and they come from all different backgrounds and you know and it's okay for them to be like that you just got to kind of teach them that's your job you mold them from the beginning to to the end of their career for sure and um, do you represent models who have appeared in so many different campaigns from H&M um, to Boo Avenue and Mulberry and Mumi mentioned as well that as well there in Gucci how do you think one contract can change a model's career so do you think that a model could potentially get typecast by appearing in a certain campaign or doing a certain job yeah you definitely have like models that you get commercial models editorial models um and you might uh, get a model i mean we're in this situation now even in lockdown you know like say a massive designer it could be Burberry, it could be prada um fall in love with a girl and they want like a worldwide exclusive, which means she cannot do anything else until she's done that. Um, but, you know, we've many years ago, we had someone on hold for an exclusive and then the day of the exclusive, they actually got canceled and then it ruined their whole season. So you've got to be really careful, um, you know, and, and have trust in like the client that's all going to kind of go through, but it's also, anything in business is about taking risks and sometimes you have to take that risk and the thing with models is they're super young so if it doesn't work that season you always have the next season um and also you know you'll get models that will you'll have like the girl that did burberry exclusive and then next season she won't do anything so you know um you've just got to be really careful it's about you know taking risks and like planning that but yeah you know you'll have models that are a bit more commercial so they're typecast as a commercial model and there seems to be this taboo in the industry there's something wrong with a commercial model not not true at all they're the ones that like can buy a house or buy two houses because they <laughs> make the money um and then you'll have like a girl <laughs> it's so true um and then you'll have girls that like do like all the editorial and stuff but you know you can't we call it you can't live on tear sheets you know it's all great doing that but then you'll get these girls that eventually are like great that I'm doing Vogue and I'm you know doing all these cool magazines but you know I need to pay my rent so I think the industry is changing a little bit now where models are uh, allowed to do a bit of both do you know what I mean you've just kind of as an agent have got to be quite careful about kind of what they do but you know if a girl was to suddenly get booked by Alison McLennan to um like be his muse like you know you get photographers that fall in love with girls and yes that can change someone's career you know like uh, like our model a jock where katie grand has fallen in love with her you know like um that will hopefully help you know change her career and then you know um other big casting directors that fall in love with that model and help direct the path that they're gonna go absolutely can change a model's career mm -hmm. And the industry has come so far in terms of diversity 
and obviously you've totally spearheaded that and you know having the, the whole plus size um model thing has you know is so much more accepted now which is fantastic and um, how do you think you've responded in terms of how the industry has changed in terms of diversity and empowerment of different body shapes and you know people from all around the world how do you think that you have responded as an agency um yeah so i definitely feel like we were the pioneers of, of that as i said it took a long time to break down those doors but it's so amazing to see like literally every brief i have now and and like brands that you wouldn't think and like companies and designers that you wouldn't think asking to include size diversity in their kind of casting mm -hmm. and yeah that's amazing and um, and I just you know I just uh, people do say to me is, is that going to be a fad but I, I really don't think it is you know I think and with the whole BLM thing um, it's incredible to see like every brief now they want like you know different color skins like different ethnicities like it's amazing so I really feel that the industry is changing for the better it's because amazing that's how it should be what yeah, I mean. the and, um, attitudes have completely changed to kind of accepting so many different people who are a cross-section of everybody across the world you know because yeah. we're not like and you think that the people that you want to see in magazines and the people that you want to see like representing brands you want them to kind of you want to be able yeah. to relate to them so it's so amazing that you know, they're representing all women and all men from all around the world. So it's fantastic that those attitudes are changing, I think. It's amazing. Yeah. I always felt like, um, like American companies were maybe a bit better than we were at mm. that, you know, using models of color and stuff. But I feel like, you know, um, now people are kind of waking up and, and doing that. And, you know, let's not forget about models with disability. We represent Kelly Knox and Chelsea Werner, one Chelsea Werner is a model with Down syndrome, Kelly Knox is missing part of her limb on her arm. Um, and I feel like there's still a lot of work to do with disability. So I know Gucci just used a couple of models with disability in their beauty campaign, which was just amazing. A friend of mine um, owns an agency for models with disability. It's called Zebedee, such a great agency. She's like, you know, paving the way. Um, so that's definitely a work on, but you know, hopefully we'll get there. You know, I think brands are being much more open-minded mm -hmm. and casting. I see it every day, you know, people are definitely being more diverse with their casting, always room for improvement. You know, I would love to see more kind of fashion designers at fashion. We use different models of size, you know, instead of having one token plus size girl, you know, that's a bit boring. I find it frustrating. Um, let's see, like, you know, five or six girls, you know, mm -hmm. there's definitely room for improvement. I think sometimes when you see a designer using just one plus size girl on the runway, you just look at it to see, to me, it looks like they're just trying to tick a box in a way. And yeah, actually, absolutely. It, you think that that's not enough for you. It's not just about ticking a box. It's about a whole attitude. And, you know, it's about, you know, that what your brand is saying to all of the kind of designers and the editors and the, and the people who are following you really. So I think it's, it's so much bigger than just putting a plus size model on a runway. It's you said you're talking about your brand. Yeah. And then I also, I used to feel, and it is changed very much, um, like the in-betweeny model. I remember, you know, only a few years ago, you'd either have your sample size or they'd need someone like a size 16, 18. So you could really see the difference. And there was this kind of like no man's land for models that were like 10, 12, 14. Mm -hmm. And some of those girls are just insanely beautiful. Mm -hmm. And actually, I'd say in the last year, there's been a massive shift in that, you know, like, you know, brands like M&S, Next, in their advertising, it's very normal now. They will use like a size 10, 12 mm -hmm. as their kind of kind of core girl. And I think that's brilliant, you know, and Scandinavian brands like Monkey, um, H&M, um, Arquette, those kind of brands have been doing that for a while too. And I think that's brilliant. They kind of, I feel like they cast models based on what they look like rather than their size, which is how it should be. Mm -hmm. So there's been a massive change in the industry. And now, you know, even though sometimes they won't have the samples for a size 16, 18, a beauty brand will almost sell 
certainly now want to see a model that is like a size 8, 10, 12, 14. It's like size does not matter. It's just yeah. you've got the right look and that's all that matters. Definitely. Um, modeling is a notoriously cutthroat industry. How do you help to look after the mental health of your models? Because it's such a huge part, you know, their confidence is such an enormous part of the jobs that they get booked on. How do you help to kind of look after them on like a pastoral level? Um, that's a huge part of being an agent. And I think what makes you a, a great agent rather than a good agent. Um, I'm, I'm a mum, so I'm naturally quite maternal to all my kind of girls. Um, as I said before, I give them the right bollocking if they need it. And I will praise them, you know, like amazingly if they've done well and just keep that honest and open relationship. Um, yeah, as I said, we have models from all different backgrounds and, you know, we just will do everything we can to put them in a really safe environment. We have no problem um, calling up a client and being, you know, um, if our model has, to be quite honest, it doesn't really happen very often, but we have had a situation where a model felt very un uncomfortable on set and we actively pursued that client photographer mm -hmm. and they shut themselves. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> we Good. That really seriously. And I think anyone now with social media and that anyone could be called out, you know, everyone has to be extremely careful. So, um, yeah. So we, yeah, we take that very seriously. As I said, like milk is, anyone that comes into the office will we have loads of dogs that run around i'm oh, an animal lover huge can, animal I lover. <laughs> <laughs> can i have a job can i have a job yes so we, we actually have we actually have four dogs um, so it's, it's yeah so it's just full of love and and i and i'm not being cheesy like yeah come into my agency it's full of love <laughs> it's not that at all it's literally like the people that work for me are awesome. Um, it's a really fun environment. Um, and I think the models feel super, super comfortable coming in. They can just come and hang out. Um, they, you know, I think we leave it open where they can kind of say anything. And yeah, we, we really like care about our models. And yeah, and, I, and those things, you know, this isn't like the 80s anymore where, you know, that kind of stuff kind of happens. We, we you know, the world has evolved and you know, I think it's seen as like a job now, not like a massive party house, mm. like people, it's a job for everyone. And going back to mental health, it's actually incredible how many models suffer with mental health. It's not like you're a beautiful person and your life is perfect mm. and you shouldn't feel anything. We've had some um, serious things with our models. Um, well, you know, one of them has had to quit because sometimes modeling is not for you, however gorgeous you are, maybe that's just not your path. And that might be the job of an agent to kind of help bring that model to that kind of understanding because it's just not the right, she's not the right in the right mindset right now, maybe in a couple of years time. Um, you do get girls that suffer with depression, but I think then it's just opening that door that they can come in and chat. And, you know, we're also really kind of, oh, that model's being, you know, not herself, like, let's check in with her kind of yeah. thing and, and stuff. So, yeah, mental health is everywhere in all different forms. So you've just got to kind of be there for them. Mm -hmm, for sure. Um, you had your own TV show called Curvy Girls Stripped Bare. Yeah. How important, well, it was amazing, like, how important was it for you to showcase the inner workings of a model agency? Um, it was really fun, actually. Um, that was such a fun part of my life. Um, I think it was really important to show kind of what we do. If I was a young girl, I would be 100% watching that show. Like, what a fun environment. Mm -hmm. And, you know, yeah, there's lots of serious stuff. But at the end of the day, we should all go to work and love what we do, love where we work and love our work colleagues. And that's what we are at Milk and how we all get on. And I think that really kind of showcased that. We have so much laughter. And um, I don't know if any of your, um, you know, students and stuff saw the premiere one. That was brilliant. I remember when that came out. <laughs> I remember that was amazing. We all kind of watched that. And um, I just think like, you know, like being a model agent, I always say is such, I think it's kind of one of those professions that some people don't know much about. Mm -hmm. And um, it actually, it's a great profession. You can start off at the bottom and you can work your way up to a top agent and you can make a lot of money and you can have great fun. 
such great skills. And I always think it's such an amazing career for some people to take. Um, so yeah, I think, yeah, it was really fun kind of opening up people to see your office. Also, it was a little bit scary. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I think the premiere one, they had cameras like placed everywhere. Us, we had a little bit more control over it because they were like handheld. Um, but the, the whole kind of production were like the loveliest people. And, and yeah, we had a really a lot of fun making it. And um, yeah, we were worried when it was edited how we were going to come across. But mm -hmm. I think, um, I think we, we came across okay and how we are. So yeah, it was good. <laughs> would, you, would you consider doing a follow up? Um, yes, definitely. Um, maybe something a little bit different. Um, maybe not so much size inclusive, maybe more the whole agency because we are so much more than just our hair board at Milk. You know, we have influencers, talent, new faces, men, women, image. So um, I would, you know, the whole agency, I think they only saw such a small part of it. So I would definitely be open to a bit more because I think it's, you know, it's a really fun, interesting industry. I would want to watch it. Do you know what I mean? Definitely. <laughs> And <laughs> um, how can the models that we see in magazines and in brand campaigns affect trends in beauty ideals? Um, I think um, social media is like huge now. So I think that's how we kind of look at fashion. We look at beauty trends, um, um, hair stuff and all that so I think um I think social media is the new magazine like mm -hmm. do people really read so many magazines anymore no or they'll read them online mm -hmm. um so I think you know people are continually scrolling their phones you know that's kind of how I shop now so I think yeah it's really important that we um <clears throat> you know we showcase healthy stuff and positive stuff because that's where everyone is looking you know even like super young people so that's I think how we're influenced um yeah uh model agencies representing talent and influencers have created a major shift in model agency working how do you approach these types of representation compared to models um yes yeah, so we've just done a little bit of a um I've said to my team on influencers, um, right, we need some fresh new talent, go out and start scrolling and looking. So you would approach <clears throat> people like that, I guess through Instagram, you'll hit their DMs and be like, do you have representation? Um, would love to come in for a meeting. So that's how it would happen. We would definitely invite them in for a meeting, kind of, you know, because I guess with influencers, lots of brands contact them directly. Mm -hmm. um, sorry, my son's just coming in the room. Can you ask where I'm? Music. Yeah, you can get a drink, sorry. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah. so um, what was it, what was I saying? Um, where was I? Um, oh yes, yeah. so, you know, we'll call them. What? Big oh, there's a wasp. Okay, go and get a drink from upstairs. Sorry, it's a wasp by the tap. <laughs> oh, have we finished in like 10 minutes? Okay, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> um, where was I? Oh yeah, so, um, yeah, you'll invite them in because, you know, as I said, brands will contact an, uh, an Instagrammer directly. That, that's how easy it is to contact models now and stuff like that. But a lot of them don't understand all the contractual stuff. And there's lots of that with uh, brandy, brand deals. So even with like some small brand deal, you might get like a 10 page contract and you'll have exclusivity and like usage and they don't understand that. And then they've kind of signed their life away. And, mm -hmm. and also as an agent, what we do is we will propose them, we get the briefs the whole time and we're also having continual brand meetings and we'll be like, well, what about this person? This person will be great for you. And I guess if they don't have an agent, they don't have that, it will just be like the odd thing that comes in instead of us kind of being proactive, um, looking for work instead of just being reactive. Um, and yeah, that's it. And actually our influencer division, I mean, throughout lockdown killed it. Like the, our numbers weren't lost at all. Um, mm -hmm. I think they've exceeded where we expected them to be. And I think because brands are not doing events and stuff, all their budgets have gone into, um, you know, brand deals and stuff. And I think luckily for us, we started the influencer thing about four or five years ago. So we're like fully kind of there now and we've been doing it a while and we've got great talent. And I think that's kind of the way forward as well. You know, influences is another huge, it's actually very different. Being a model agent is extremely different from being yeah. an influencer agent. It's a quite interesting thing. 
And do your bookers that you have working at Milk, do they, is it a completely different team that works on model booking compared to like your influencer? Yeah. One? Yes, so we have our kind of, we have three people on um, the influencer team and that is a, a team I'm looking to expand next year by like one or two staff. Mm -hmm. um, so um, that is definitely um, massive room to grow there. Um, and yeah, as I said, it's very different. And, and the model agents, I think it's something they need to learn because now when you get contracts in or briefs, sometimes a brand will want a post or a couple of stories you know, as well as all the other usage. So, um, so yeah, it's, it, you know, even like model bookers are now learning this whole different kind of thing. Um, and as I said, there's loads of like contracts and then you've got the briefs and, you know, and then you've got to kind of make sure that your talent deliver the content when it's due. So you always have your client going, oh, they haven't posted. And yeah. so that's another thing. Influencers can be quite tricky. I'm not going to lie. Um, <laughs> So you have to have a lot of patience and it's, you know, and it's about, you know, you can't just be like, you've got to do this post, da, 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 da. It's about like being calm and, you know, explaining, you know, and things. So sometimes you have to have extreme patience. <laughs> what do you think are the key skills? Like you mentioned there that you think it's really important for model agents to expand their skills and would be really beneficial for them to learn more about working with influencers what do you think are the key skills that are important to being a, a model booker or an influencer agent or both <laughs> i think a model booker you have to have energy you've got to um be hungry for it um there's, you'll never be a good agent if you just sit back and wait for like stuff to come in you have to be attention to detail is really important because you can really mess something you know mess something up um uh you have to have great people skills um as i said you're liaising with the client and then the model you have to you know be a role model for that model as well the client's got to trust you you've got to you know be reasonably good at maths because you know you've got to negotiate rates and stuff um you've got to understand usage so you've got to be pretty savvy um also you have to have an eye i think there's something that maybe you can train but it's some people have a natural gift for scouting and for an eye of picking a star. Do you know what I mean? Or seeing how a girl can work. Cause you know, some people you might just be, Oh no, no, she's not right. But if you've got to be able to see past the really bad eyebrows and like, you know, the, the roots, do you know what I mean? Or a few pimples, you've got to be able to see that you've got to have patience. Um, you've got to be a team player. I think, um, maybe my agency is different but it's a big team atmosphere it's not about like the ego it's about you know you'll get more if you work as a team um you've got to be prepared to put long hours in at fashion week you will work till two in the morning most probably you know four days straight um sometimes you, it's not a nine to five job you know you can leave at six but often stuff will come in after you might have a model that's missed her flight and you're onto the phone at the out of hours travel agent for 45 minutes on you know tuesday night which is really annoying it doesn't happen all the time i don't want to put people off but um but you know it's also a super exciting job because you never know what's going to happen. You never know which amazing client is going to contact you for the best job of your career. You never know if the next K Moss is going to walk in the door. Um, you know what I mean? So it's every single day is different. And I think that's what makes it super exciting. For an, you know, an, an, an entry level model booker, what would yeah. their kind of day look like if they, you know, if say some, a graduate came from university and they came to work with you, what would you get them doing like what would their main task be oh, okay so um normally like an entry level you you know you definitely kind of have to learn before you started booking so that can be um just watching and assisting um it can be um updating the model's books which of course someone will show you booking flights booking accommodation uh liaising with the model um you might have to take a model on um, some show castings or a job um maybe pre-COVID time now, things like that are a bit different, but hopefully we'll get back. Um, you know, like it could be assisting me um, and, you know, doing go sees. you know, you've got a model in town, right, who can this model see? Right, I'm gonna call up next, I'm gonna call up. Um, I'm trying to get, a, she's amazing, I'm gonna try and get her into Vogue. So it's, you know, having the confidence to cold call in a way and pick up the phone and be like, oh my God, I've gotta see this girl. The go sees. Um, 
booking flights, booking accommodation, booking cars, um, booking maybe the smaller job. So maybe a little lookbook for a couple of hundred pounds or something like that. So all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, you kind of start that way and then you'll mostly be in CC with one of your kind of senior agent and then you must read all those emails and understand the usage, understand the rates. And, you know, if you're a smart person and you want it, you'll be able to pick it up. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Um, what was my next question? So you mentioned there about, you know, being able to pick up the phone and cold call magazines. Yeah. Um, how do you work with those magazines to fit a brief? Because obviously like fashion editors will have different briefs that they're working on or they're doing different trend stories and they will quite often be looking for a particular type of model. How would you work with um, a fashion editor or a bookings director to provide models who fit a brief? How would you? Well, I think then it's a communication between you and the fashion editor because they'll have an idea in their mind about what they want. So some fashion editors will send like a mood board mm -hmm. and like either be just be like the vibe or it will be kind of what kind of the model they're looking for. And then you as the agent have to kind of follow that brief. And it must be an annoying for a um, client if you totally go off brief. But sometimes you need to go off brief with maybe one or two girls because that's your job to kind of feed them someone good and be like, you know, you've got to see this girl. She's amazing and convince them that, you know, they need to use this model, but you know, also don't want to go too off brief because then you annoy the client, you know, and then they're like, Oh my God, I've asked for like brunettes and you've sent me five redheads. Do you know what I mean? So uh, <laughs> you kind of need to, you know, manage that. Yeah. Um, and yeah, then it's kind of like a collaboration. And then if they like the model, they'll put like maybe a couple of options on a few girls, you know, because they won't necessarily get the time on someone. And then, yeah, then you confirm the job and make sure the model gets there. Bish bash bosh. <laughs> <laughs> make it sound so easy. Um, <laughs> and it's not. Um, when, ha, what's the process like in scouting new models? So obviously a lot of model agencies would have days when models would come in but then you do like open casting calls but how do you become proactive in going out there and finding new models because not everybody would you know not there's so many models like models on the on the street as it were who would make amazing models but they're not in a position where they would want to apply or or they feel that that would be their route so how do you go out and find them um so pre-COVID times, and then hopefully this will start again soon. So every weekend, that's another thing for a new person that would come and work at Milk, you would be actively scouting. I would literally be right, you're quiet now. Can you go and sit in Topshop for four hours? <laughs> or like walk down Oxford Street, or I'll be like, I would expect someone new that came to work at my agency that was super hungry for it to, you know, give up a couple of their weekends a month. You would get paid to do that. Um, to maybe we would pay all your expenses, but we might send you to Manchester, Nottingham or wherever in England, or it might be a concert where you might be expected after work to go to, I don't know, a Rihanna concert at the O2 and kind of scout the line. Um, and then, you know, when you see someone, I always kind of go up and go, oh my God, you're so pretty or handsome or whatever. And um, have you ever thought about modeling? And I always give my card and I'm very much like, um, and if it's someone who looks super young, I'll be like, give this to your mom, have a look at the website and then give me a call. Um, and then now a lot of people are scouting online. Um, I just, you know, I've scouted people while I'm doing my weekly shop at Waitrose. Um, you know, just always looking. Yeah. You know, kind of be having lunch with your family and you're like, I just need to go one second and then you'll run off and <laughs> scout someone, you know. So I'm always looking. I've even trained my son to scout. Oh. He's, even, he's like, Mum, should we, should we scout that girl or boy? <laughs> well, he's got to earn his keep, hasn't he? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Do you see any patterns or trends in what casting agents are looking for in terms of models? Um, yeah, definitely. You'll kind of see um, what people have been like on the catwalk. So you might get like really androgynous looking models or like really quirky. Um, or you might just have like, there'll be seasons where the girls are just really English rose, just really pretty. I think we had that a couple of seasons ago. All the girls were like, they weren't interested in actually the super editorial edgy kind of girls at all. Like all the girls were like beautiful. 
So you kind of go in waves like that, do you know what I mean? Um, or you might have, you know, like one season, the models might be really strong and then other seasons, like just super pretty. Um, mm -hmm. and there was definitely that phase of like sexy, wasn't there? So yeah, definitely. And waves. do you have to, when you see that happening, do you guys as model agents try and respond quite quickly and then... Yeah, definitely. I think there was a yeah, there was a season where there were like loads of blondes and actually finding a really good blonde is quite difficult. So um, we were like, right, we need blondes, you know. <laughs> and, uh, and, like, yeah, we need some really like pretty girls. Um, so yeah, then you kind of start looking at foreign agencies and, and also when you're scouting in, in England as well. How important do you think it is to build up relationships with, you know, different agencies or and different creatives? Like, who are the types of creatives and people that you work with on a day to day? Sorry, repeat the question. <laughs> Sorry, Sorry. I mumbled it a bit there. So you mentioned there that some of your agents would build relationships with other agencies in different countries. Yes. How important do you think it is to build relationships with not just other model bookers, but other creatives? Like how, how would they do that, build relationships? Um, yes, so uh, one of the things about being an agent here is your foreign agency relationships is huge. So just you would begin to have those relationships. Someone from another country will give you a great girl. They'll trust you with that model. And then you have to prove to them what you can do and how you look after them and nurture them and you make the right choices for their career. Um, so, yeah, your foreign agency relationships are massive. You know, to get yourself to like be a top agent, you have to have great relationships. <laughs> And you also have to build your relationships with um, with the clients as well. You know, like, you know, the casting directors have to trust you. You know, you're showing them great new faces. You're making the right decisions. Um, and, you know, also, you know, you've got to be really helpful. You know, you might get a client that calls you at 9 p.m. and like, oh, my God, my model's been cancelled. Please help me find another model. And you could choose not to look at your emails or you can do everything in your power to get them that model. Um, and I think that, you know, makes you a great agent too. You know, the, the casting director might call you and no one else because they're like, right, I know Anna's going to get me that girl and I know she's going to be on her emails and, and stuff. So, um, so, yeah, and that's, you know, it's like being a model. You want to get, you don't want to be a model that never gets booked again. It's all about repeat bookings. And it's the same with being an agent. You want that client to repeat book with you because you have great quality models and you're a great agent. You're thorough and you can you know, your model will show up and know what to do. And my students are expected to learn lots of skills in art direction, photography, hair and makeup, styling. And at Solent, we're really proactive in getting our students working on different shoots for their own projects, but also um, for their briefs as well. And obviously they have to cast models. And a lot of the time they use each other in, in shoots, which is great. But how would they go about sort of casting you know test models for example for a shoot so if they wanted to book any like new faces what would be the way to go to do that so i would suggest for tests i wouldn't kind of go to the women's board because they're kind of more like money bookings you know stuff i would go straight to new faces so call up new faces um speak to the booker send a brief you know like you want to show them visually what you're aiming to create um, give them as much kind of detail about you as possible, show that you're really keen. You could even ask to come in and have like a meeting um, and see some girls, you know. Um, it's also good for um, the new faces to kind of practice doing castings and stuff and same for you guys. So you could kind of help each other that way. So yeah, I would just go straight to the new faces, just have all the details, be really thorough. You could even pick up the phone and have a little chat, you mm -hmm. know. I think um, everything is done by, by email now, but sometimes it's nice to pick up the phone and just kind of have that kind of communication. Definitely. Well, thank you very much for joining us today. And I really appreciate it. Um, it was great to talk to you. Sorry, the internet was a bit like dodgy at the start. Um, <laughs> and all as well, so oh, <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate it. And um, do you want to just uh, do a quick plug for your Instagram channels? Um, yes. So um, follow us at Milk Model Management on Instagram. Um, and yeah, keep in touch. Um, and yeah, hopefully we'll see you one day as a big designer, big model booker or, or something. <laughs> so good luck with everything. And thank you. Thank and, uh, you.
Thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. Take care. Bye. Bye.